Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. I heard you loud and clear last video. Everyone said they wanted to do a video on the weight plate, so that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm actually gonna go a little bit back on what I said and I'm gonna make several videos on it because you guys know I like context and I like talking equipment, so hopefully you guys too, and I think it will kind of give it a nice little flow. So I'm gonna do a couple of videos. We'll call this series Picking Plates. I don't know how many videos they're gonna be, but I imagine it's probably gonna be around three or four. So this first video, I wanna talk about why I sold my calibrated plates because I've been getting a lot of questions on why I did that. I'll then talk about looking at the secondhand market and what I was looking for and what potentially I found, and then talk about going the new route as well before giving you guys an overview and first impression on the plates that I actually got and talk about what I like, what I don't like, the usual. So I'm guessing around three or four videos. So this first video, Let's talk about calibrated plates. And if you've been watching my channel, you know that I've had several pairs of competition style plates, initially going with some bumpers because lifting at home, I thought those would be best for my floors. Turns out they weren't any that different than regular steel plates and they just took up a lot more space on the bar itself, which I wanted to eventually get away from because I couldn't lift anything heavy enough and fit it on the bar necessarily. I then went to the Ivanko competition style plates, which I liked a lot. However, they were very expensive and there was kind of a weird scenario where I bought them on the day that the Rogue calibrated plates came out while I was in Columbus, Ohio and had just gone to the Rogue headquarters. And it was one of those things where the Rogue plates kind of got away from me until their first Black Friday sale where I got a great deal on a set of Rogue plates. I got more weight for less money and was able to sell my Ivancos and actually make money and get more weight. And that eventually led me to selling the Rogue plates that you guys have called me on and why I'm being so questionable on selling those plates. So I wanna address that today in this video. Now, as part of that, one of the things I wanna outline is three basic things you should know about me. Number one, I'm extremely lazy when it comes to certain things. Now, that's coming from someone who likes to train several times per week and I have definite interests where I put time and effort into, but some things I'm just pure lazy on. And in the case of moving locations, one of the things I really wanted to avoid was having to move a bunch of gym equipment, which is one of the reasons I sold a lot of stuff. And some of the buying criteria behind what I get for future purchases is just because I'm lazy and I want something that's gonna do the job better than what I currently have. That being said, I usually like to buy stuff. I don't like to make stuff or wait for things. Again, the laziness coming into play. So keep that in mind as we go through this video. Also keep in mind complacency. So with me, I love gym equipment, as you guys can probably tell, 90 minutes worth of talking about racks and a couple videos that are gonna be talking about weight plates. I get very complacent at times and I really like gym equipment, meaning that I like to buy new stuff. However, I really struggle with practicability in the fact that I don't necessarily need certain things. So I usually like to sell what I have in order to fund what I wanna buy that's new even if potentially there's nothing wrong with the stuff that I'm selling. So keep that in mind again as we're talking about these weight plates and for future reference, any other thing that I buy and or sell. Lastly, I wanna talk about, what did I talk about so far? We've talked about laziness, we've talked about complacency. The last thing I wanna talk about is uniformity, meaning that I'm the type of person that likes to have a uniform setup when it comes to certain things, especially when it comes to weights, meaning that I'm fully aware I could probably go out and put together piece by piece a great weight set, but chances are that those weights aren't all going to be uniform in how they look, meaning different brands, different levels of wear on them. Of course, you could restore weights, which hopefully we'll talk about in one of these videos, not in the series, but in another video. Uh, but when I buy stuff, I like to buy stuff that kinds of fits. And I talked about this when I talked about my racks. I wanted to be able to invest in something that had a very big ecosystem that I could buy different bits and pieces for and everything kind of work together. Weight plates, same thing. That was kind of one of my ideas here. So keep those three things in mind when I talk about all of the things in these videos about choosing new weight plates. So from the calibrated standpoint, why did I sell those plates? A couple of reasons. And a lot of them will kind of tie into these things I just mentioned. So number one, the laziness factor. I didn't want to transfer 1,100, give or take, I think more close to 1,000 pounds of weights from point A to point B. So I didn't wanna move them to my new house because I was already moving my entire household as is. I was also traveling around the time I was moving and having to transfer those would just be one other thing off my back. Just for some context around that, I also ended up selling around 10 bars, a couple other pieces of equipment, including a box squat box, bench, a combo rack, uh, stall mats. So a lot of stuff I downsized on just because I'm not gonna have room for necessarily, 
or I didn't want to move it. So again, that laziness factor coming into play. Also, one of the kind of motivators for me selling that rogue set was that I knew I could sell it and make a decent amount of money. So again, if you watch that Ivanko versus Rogue video, which I'll try to link in the description box below, I actually got my Rogue set for a tremendous deal. The first year they ever did the Black Friday sale on that set, I purchased it for about $1,300, which is roughly a $1,000 difference if you were to buy it new outside of that sale. They have since run other Black Friday sales, but they've never been as good. So I bought my set for about $1,300. I then turned around and sold it two years later for $1,800. So I actually made $500 on the transaction, which was another benefit for me, again, tying into the fact that I wanted to move it and I could make money on it. And as a complete side note, you'll hear me reference this a lot because I always get questioned on a lot of these videos about, oh, you're really wasting money or why do you buy such expensive things? You should buy cheaper. Investing money in this stuff usually pays off in the long run. So again, I bought something for $1,300, which a lot of people will say is overkill. You don't need calibrated plates at home. And I sold that two years later. So typically when you buy something, it depreciates over time. But I actually made a $500 profit on what I paid, which then would help me fund new plates. And I could have those plates delivered to my house because I'd be ordering them brand new, which again, ties into that laziness factor we've already talked about. I also am fully aware that if I really wanna get kilo plates again, I probably won't get that same deal I initially got on the Rogue ones, even if I buy them Black Friday, but there are companies now coming out with competition style plates that actually really mimic what Rogue is doing. In fact, Strong Arm Sport, who I do a lot of their bars on, has a set that's made in the same factory and literally the only thing that's different, instead of saying Rogue, it says Strong Arm Sport. In fact, my buddy Adam over at Garage Gym Lab has a set of them. He'll be releasing his full review soon. I'll link his channel and his Instagram in the description box below. If you're not following him, you should. Him and Coop buy a lot of gym equipment and somehow manage to keep it, whereas I end up selling most of my stuff. Um, but he has his hands on those, and from what I've heard from multiple people, they're identical outside of what the actual name says on the plate. So you can typically get those at like a 30% discount versus what Rogue charges, and if you don't care if they have an IPF sticker or a Rogue sticker on it, so to say, then I could always go that route and probably pay exactly what I sold my old set for. So that's always something to keep at top of mind. So let's also talk a little bit about the complacency factor. So for me, like I said, I like buying a lot of stuff. I like using different equipment, but it's tough for me because at times I am budget conscious, meaning that I don't wanna just spend a ton of money on my home gym because it's very easy to go overboard as you guys know. And full disclosure, I spend a lot of money on my home gym as is, but I didn't really make sense for me to pick up an additional set of weights past what I already had because they did the job fine. So in order to justify buying new plates, which I just really wanted because I just wanted to go in a different direction, it made the most sense to sell the current ones I had. And again, tying into the fact that I made money on them and could completely fund my new plates I wanted to get. Again, that lined up with what I wanted to do. Now complacency with the actual calibrated plates, I love them, they're great, especially if you're competing in powerlifting that uses KGs, which for the most part is everyone. Uh, they're a great thing to have because they're really set you up for game day type situations. And if you haven't competed or used them before, you might think there's not that big of a difference outside the fact that, of course, that they're super accurate. And I'll talk about maybe cheap plates in a separate video as part of this series. Being able to go up and squat when you have a couple of reds on the bar and have it look like it's not even a couple of hundred pounds is very different than when you actually get under the bar and realize that, you know, four reds per side is actually like 500 pounds and it feels a lot heavier, yet it takes up about half of the space that normal gym plates would. It is very humbling experience, especially if that first time you do that is in a competition. So being able to train with calibrated plates for me had been great, but to be honest, I hadn't competed in powerlifting in about a year. I'm not sure when the next time I will compete will be. I will definitely lift in a powerlifting meet again because I like wearing spandex singlets that much. Um, but it just got to the point where they didn't really serve the same purpose that they did previously. And I'm kind of past that point where I've worked with calibrated plates enough that I know what to expect and I'm not thrown off by them being on the bar. There are some other little nitpicky things I had with them, namely that they don't really have anywhere to grip. Some of the newer plates you might see coming out uh, do have some ingrained lip groove, so to say, so you can grab it better. But powerlifting plates in general, especially the 25s, which are the reds, which are the most abundant, or hopefully the most abundant ones that you're using because they're the heaviest, 
outside of the 50 kg, which you don't see that often. Um, <clears throat> they're hard to grip. So being able to grip a plate and move it around, especially if you're changing weights all the time by yourself, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Again, it's something that you can definitely do, but again, laziness factor tying into that, it's not ideal. The good thing about going to a powerlifting meet is you have spotters and loaders who are gonna do all that work for you. So that's obviously great, but lifting at home by yourself, you're not afforded that same convenience factor. Uh, so that's something that I also took into consideration with it. Um, so that kind of covers a little bit of the complacency. It's just ready for something different, and there's a lot of other things out there. And that's the hard part about owning a gym and investing in a gym. Is there's always a lot of great stuff out there, and it's hard to kind of own it all unless you're like Coop from Garage Gym Reviews who literally owns everything, and somehow he's convinced his wife to let him keep it all as well. So I need to get on his level when it comes to that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uniformity. So right now how I had the calibrated plates was fine for that factor, but going forward in some of these things that we'll discuss in future videos, I really wanted to make sure that I have something that fits this space, some feng shui almost from a lifter's standpoint, uh, but also for my own peace of mind because I didn't want to piece things together. So I could have probably just bought a couple of 45s or a you know, a complete weight set, which is usually a pair of 45s, 35s, 25s, 10s, 5s, 2.5s, uh, for a couple hundred bucks off of a provider and gotten a little taste of what the other side is like without having to sell my calibrated plates. But then I didn't really see a point of me ever mixing and matching calibrated competition plates with normal steel plates. I know personally I just wouldn't be able to do that and have my mind sit right. Again, those are the three factors that really go into a lot of my decision-making process. So that's another reason why the plates had to go. That being said though, they did go to a great home. So I sold them to a person who coaches a powerlifting team. I actually believe that they're going to be opening up a gym or trying to do that. And they really cater towards people that aren't put in a good spot to do powerlifting. So a lot of inner city youth type people up in Boston. At least that's what they told me. So that's really awesome to know that it's going to a good place. But being able to make money off my initial investment while still selling it at an extreme discount so I sold my set for 1800 and if you bought them brand new, it'd probably cost 2300 So it was a win-win in everyone's case for this instance, except for maybe the internet, which in case this video will be fuel for you to go ahead in the comment section below and call me names or say what I did was dumb or I just like to waste money, which comes with every video, but hey, that's what the internet is for, isn't it? Well, that and pornography, of course, so either way, it's a win-win. So this is the start of a series, picking plates, sold my calibrated plates, came down to it, didn't want to move it, was just kind of sick of training with them, wanted something new and didn't want to have redundancy in terms of my lifting. So in the next video, we'll take a look at maybe why I wanted to avoid cheap plates and I'll talk about some of the reasons why that even though I wanted to downsize both from a quality standpoint and from what I already had in terms of top of the top, in terms of calibrated plates, but I also didn't want to go bottom of the barrel because there are some things that could potentially ruin your lifting experience. So we'll talk about that next video. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.